video, I'm going to take you through Steve Ritchie's Getaway Pinball Machine, which was released in 1992. It has a fantastic feature, which is a supercharger, which is a magnetic accelerator, which flings the ball around, a stainless steel loop. My supercharger is playing up, so I thought I'd show you how to test one and then take you through the steps that I went through to identify my issue and fix it to get the ball whizzing around the loop once again. When the ball enters the supercharger, the magnets at the back under those red lights are supposed to fling the ball around and it's supposed to go around 10, 12 times. Um, and you can see from this, it just fizzles out. Now, the best thing to do is once, if you're getting this, is to take it into the test mode. To do that, what you want to do is uh, go into the simple test mode and there's one specially for superchargers. Once in supercharger test, you want to actually just fling the ball the wrong way around. And that'll tell you whether there's any magnets at all. And then fling it the right way around. And that'll give you a time in milliseconds um, of the ball traveling from the last opto switch of the uh, superchargers right through to there's another opto switch on the side of the loop. That should read around, if you're lucky, 100. 100. You can get it less than 100. But as you can see, mine's 252, which is obviously way too slow. So, one of the next things you can first thing to test, the easiest thing is are your balls magnetized? So I've got a new ball, throw it in, what do you see? Marginally better performance, but still not good enough. So first thing, you know, trying to find the easiest solution, which is a magnetized ball. Well, that's a bit of a fail. So we're going to have to start looking in and take the cover off. Move these three, give us access to the supercharger. That comes out quite easily. And just remove this plug. So then you can see that there's three optos, fourth opto here. And that determines how quickly or how slowly it comes through. Now that you've got the front cover off, we're just going to remove the, the top cover, which means means just we need to take out the four screws. So that's a bit dull, so I'll put that in fast forward um, and see once I've got the cover off. So once you've got the cover off, you need to just check to see if all the plugs are in good condition, there are no loose wires, nothing that looks a bit burnt out. doesn't seem to be the problem. The next thing to check is whether the, uh, the gate has got some damage on it, or one of the classic examples is the rivet or you can put a big screw in that will hamper the ball from flowing through around. So it doesn't seem to be the issue here, but um, that's the next easy problem to investigate. Okay, now that I've removed the cover, first thing I'm going to check is the um, the magnets. They very rarely go. They're often replaced. They're never needed, very rarely needed to replace. So I'm just going to unplug these. I'm going to check them. We've set the, uh, the multimeter onto ohms. Um, and we're looking for somewhere between around 4 or 5 ohms of resistance. tells you that the the magnet's still in pretty good shape. So there we go, 5.7 on number 3. Plug that back in. Test the second one. And we're getting 5.5. It's pretty good. Okay, last one. It's 
ones. A little bit less, 4.4, 4.5. So from that, I'm pretty comfortable. Those are good. The next thing we're going to check is the Octos. Um, and we'll go and see how we can have a look at those. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to just test the Opto switches. There's effectively four Opto switches which are in the supercharger. You've got three that drive each of the magnets plus a fourth that signals the ball has come around. So we're just going to go and test those quickly. Into test, go to switch edges and we're just going to go and interrupt the beam very quickly firstly just with a pencil on each one so this is that one's working that's working that's opto which three it's opto switch three which drives magnet three two that drives magnet two check the numbers are right because i have seen examples where they're wrong they're firing the wrong magnets and then I'm just going to run a ball around it gently. And you can see that as it goes through, it's triggering each one as the ball interrupts the beam of the opto. So that's not the problem. So it's starting to get a bit trickier, but let's keep going. So the next thing we're going to check is in the menu item, there's actually a supercharger test which allows you to test each item. So you've got one, two, and three. So 1, 2, and 3 represents magnets 1, 2, and 3 with the um, optos 1, 2, and 3. So once it's on the test, by interrupting the coil, you can see that it's interrupting the uh, opto switch. You can see that it's triggering 1, 2, and 3. Again, that checks that. And then we're going to turn on each of the, the coils one at a time. We'll turn on each of the coils one at a time, starting with coil number three and working backwards. Um, and you hopefully see some kind of magnetization of the ball as it flows through for each one. It'll obviously, it may not be nearly as powerful when all three are going. So you can see that that fired it through. So it looks like there's some power coming from three. Just go until the point where two is on now. So that's got some some, some force. Force is coming from two. So let's check the last one. And it's absolutely nothing. So there's clearly a problem with this magnet one, um, which clearly is not getting any electricity now. We've tested the coil, but what we can do is go back to let's go back to just test number two and we'll go to the voltmeter and we're going to test to see that um, Let's pop this up here. We're going to test to see what the volt reading is on on this. So let's have a look at take out number two. We know it's working, and we're going to plug in and see what voltage is is reading now. Just to make sure you can put the positive goes into the cable which is green purple and the red goes that way and you get a positive reading without anything flowing you should see approximately three volts flow throwing through it but the moment the ball enters it and the magnet fires you should see that shooting up if it's getting voltage can see as this interrupts now you want to be very careful and just look at it very quickly otherwise you burn out a fuse you can see that that voltage jumps up 
to over 36 as it pulses with the um, it close. Now we're going to do the same on magnet number one and see if we get the same result. So take the plug out. This is the one that looked like it wasn't firing. And we'll plug this in and get the. Um, so have a look. So now, incidentally, we're getting the three volts, but when I pulse this, let's see what happens. Absolutely nothing when I interrupt the. When I interrupt it, you can see the opto is working, but it's not causing any extra volts. So I think there's a problem down below on the transistor on the accelerator board. Let's go and have a look there. So here's the accelerator board um, that drives the magnets. Um, I've got my quarter inch driver and a sharpie. I'm going to remove the board, but before I do that, I'm just going to label each of the um, each of these plugs as they come out, just to make sure, because sometimes. It's tricky. So once I've taken that out, I'll be back. So this is the accelerator board that's taken out. Normally I'd get my trusty voltmeter out, set it to diode testing, and test the transistors, and I'd be able to determine what's gone wrong and then replace the missing transistor. But if you look carefully enough, you can see that this board is quite badly cooked. Um, you can see it on the front, there's a whole lot of quite badly repaired traces, um, very bad soldering, and then underneath you can see it's an absolute hack job. So one of the most important lessons that I think everyone needs to learn is to know your limits. This is beyond my limits of board repair. I can change transistors, no problem, but trying to work out where the broken traces are, repairing all the traces. This is going to go off to Ken Shipley up in Newcastle in Australia, who's an expert at fixing this. He'll spend uh, a couple of hours looking at it, and he'll be a good judge to see whether this is something I should toss and replace, or whether he can actually fix it together normally and fix it back together again. Normally, he's able to fix it, he'll give it a good service, and um, that'll be that, but um, know your limits, so let's wait to send that off to Ken and see what we come back with. So um, 48 hours after realizing that the repair of this crusty burnt up old accelerator board was beyond my soldering skills, um, I have a new one. So um, this arrived in the post today. Um, it is basically manufactured by Homepin, uh, Mike up in Shenzhen, China, the maker of um, Homepin Pinball, um, probably known for his Hankin tables and uh, Thunderbirds Pinball Machine, has uh, also got a side business and it was original his business which is the manufacturer of, of some of these um, replacement boards, he's, there's a variety of them available on John's Arcade um, in Australia. There's a couple of places in the US that it, you can say it. So now if you compare effectively side by side the two boards um, you can see that um, for as little as just under 90 Australian dollars um, if I've got a brand spanking new board. Um, I actually contacted Ken to fix the old one and I sent him some pictures and said look by the time you've posted it up and had me work on it um, you're better off just buying a new one so that's Ken for you um, there's one small issue you just need to replace obviously just remove these these uh, screws and attach them on but should uh, fit straight back in there so I'm going to do that right now So um, this is where the accelerator board goes again, so I'm going to take this opportunity to give it a clean because clearly you can see that whatever exploded here in the history of this machine has made a bit of a mess on the bottom of the play field and 
I might as well just uh, try and see what I can get off. Make it look a bit better. And so just generally see what I can do to get some of that black gunk off there. It's a bit of a shame that it's there at the first place, but So I've cleaned up that area and just installing that in with a quarter inch driver. Secure that. Yes. Okay. Okay, now the plugs are numbered, as you remember and that will make it pretty easy to make sure plus the fact that they keyed so you can basically see that the holes that aren't supposed to have anything are keyed and that on the board so they can't go in the wrong place but just to be sure we're just checking the numbers get all those out we we'll go from there. And that simply goes in. And Bob's your uncle. Okay, now fingers crossed, moment of truth, we're going to turn it on and test the board. Bear in mind we're getting pretty slow times around the supercharger, it wasn't even functioning, so we're going to just before we put it all back together go into the test go into the supercharger time test actually let's test the individual coils first um, and we'll go and test all three of them first Disabled. One coil disabled. Coil number two disabled. Only coil number three working. So let's just to disable the lock. And let's go and have a look at what um, the different test here. Go and test the supercharger time test, which is there. So we're going to there. Throw another coil up. So we'll take that test uh, as a massive success. That board's doing great things. So um, that's it. Now what I'm going to do, the next steps to get it really humming along, I'm going to go and get some polish, um, metal polish, and polish the inside of the rail, rail inside of the uh, supercharger here. Recommendation there is very much that that also has a significant impact on, on the game. So that's the next step, maybe tomorrow. So I'm going to try to take the um, supercharger off now so that I can give it a polish. That's another thing on the to-do list. So there's effectively one, two, three, four, five, six screws or nuts holding it on. I'm hoping that I can then remove it. Um, I'll let you know how I go and once it's removed I'll, uh, I'll let you know. So it turns out that there's four screws holding in the units where the magnets sit. So you need to remove the two screws here. You don't need to remove these two. And then the two that are on the flap, um, holding the flap down on the, on the play field down here. So I've removed those. Um, and then once you've removed that, you can literally slide 
the whole unit out and then get access to these four nuts to remove that unit so you can potentially polish inside there. Um, while I've got the game up I might also polish in here with a bit of Novus, it's, it's pretty grimy, this game's not in great nick. But um, we'll see how we go. I'm just going to remove these four screws now. Be careful with this, I'll get the last one out. So, by simply removing this wire that's attached there, actually, I believe it's going to be a lot easier. So that was the bit that was holding it on. And so now, with that all loose, I think I can just slide these off and have a look at how dirty things are inside there. very grimy in there so I'm going to try to see how to just slide all this, this whole unit off so I'm being careful to slide those octos off one by one they're attached quite closely to the so those just slide off like that and so now I've got all of those off and I've got that out so I'm going to give that, that is really grimy and cr really cruddy in there so I'm going to give that a polish now as well as this and then put the whole thing back together again so if you look in here there's a lot of grime and gunk in here so I'm just going to get a and then also in here there's a real ball track around there so I've got some Novus 3, I'm going to give that a go prefer not to use anything heavier than that but um, Novus 3 is, is obviously the, the most abrasive of the Novus range. Um, so I'm going to just give that a go and see how, how nicely that comes up with a bit of Novus. So with the Novus, I've got most of it out, but you can still see there's a track in there. Um, so I've gone out and got a couple of things. I've got some um, more metal polish, which I'm going to give a go. And then I've also got some um, 1200 grit sand, wet and dry sandpaper, which I'm going to try as well. I'm going to test it out on this bit that you can't see, because um, this goes in underneath the magnet. And, um, see how that goes, see if I can get rid of some of those marks. And then of course I'll go and do the other the other ramps to see if I can get that to to look a bit better. So I'm going to start first with the um, this polish, which promises to uh, remove all scratches off a variety of different metals, including stainless steel. So it's a it's quite a thick paste. It's much thicker than uh, the Novus. So let's give that a go. Just put a dob of that in there and we'll just automatically straight away I can see that it's, it's cutting more because it's it is actually um, producing much more of a um, you can see that it's having a better impact but I'm still not sure that it's going to get rid of those scratches that I've got um, so I'm going to try the um, well, let's just take this off and you can you can see what it looks like it's definitely polishing it there's no doubt about that but where you've got the um, the areas with severe wear it's it's they're not they're not gonna smooth off and maybe that's good enough to be honest but um, Who knows? I'm going to try see if we can do this, and I'm going to use for lubrication. I'm just going to use a bit of Novus 3, 
uh, with the sandpaper. It's a trick that I've got from Shaggy's videos. If you haven't had a look at those, do so. He recommends um, using 1200, sorry, a 2000 grit sandpaper. I couldn't get any, but I'm just going to use 1200 and see if that how that works. Again, this is just as much of an experiment to see what it looks like because this this actually you'll never really see. Now that the gunk's out, it's probably good enough, but let's see. Let's have a look. And this wet and dry sandpaper hopefully does the trick. Along with the Novus 3 is a lubricant. the rest of the wrap because that metal polish looks like it's brought up a real shine to the inside of that which is quite nice you can see on that so um, I'm going to do the rest of the ramp with that and see in here whether the sandpaper can bring get rid of some of the, uh, the more extreme track marks which you can see if we point down like that, you can see the, the track marks through here and also you can see these track marks down here which I will try to get rid of. So let's see how we go. So I'm doing the same here, I've got the uh, 1200 grit sandpaper, a bit of nervous. Number three is lubricant. And I'm just literally getting a, a very trying to stay, keep the direction the same to see if I can remove some of those full track marks which on the U-turn. Trying to get make sure I get the see what that looks like so far. So it's got a slight improvement. I'm going to try to use some of this other polish this shine polish that I picked up is the next step and just see what difference that makes. Try it. Just bring out some of the um, the tracks and maybe by polishing up the surround those tracks will potentially disappear or become less Less visible because effectively all of the steel around it will be smooth and shiny rather than just the bit that's worn smoother as a result of where the ball has been. Let's go. A real shine to the wrap actually, which makes the uh, the track actually disappear. So I'm going to do that for a bit more and pull back. So you can have a look in there now. The um, that U-turn is looking really good now. So I'm going to have a crack at doing the rest of it um, again. There's two parts to this. One is aesthetic and the other one is to actually get the uh, supercharger going a bit quicker. There's a lot of recommendations online that suggest 
you know, if you can get rid of all the muck and polish up what's inside on the supercharger, it can make the supercharger a lot better, more efficient. So with that off, you can I can run my hand through here and you can feel lots of just it's quite sticky actually um, inside which can't be doing it any good so I'm going to do the same with I'll probably just go straight for the uh, for the polish um, maybe a little bit of, of sandpaper and, and um, in some of the areas in here but by and large I think the polish is doing a pretty good job so um, let me get in and do that just let me start with the Novus and just see how we go and a bit of sandpaper. Again, it's the 1200 grit um, sandpaper. I'm just going to go back and forth in the line over the tracks in an attempt to remove some of the ball tracks, make them less obvious. careful not to um, go too close to where the optos are. I have been a bit lazy in not removing those optos. Um, but there's no real wear around there. So let's see how that comes out now. And we'll get some of that polish off. actually come up pretty nicely. And I'll get that Novus 3 from the sandpaper. I'll move on to the, the metal polish now and get that shine up. I've really that sandpaper in the Novus 3 has really removed the majority of of all of the sticky. It's actually really nice and smooth in there now. Um, so we'll get some of the metal polish now just to give it a bit of a even more of a shine and get it really smooth in there okay so I haven't done a huge amount of polishing in there, but it really it's starting to come up shine quite nicely. So I'm going to keep going for another five minutes. See how we go. So I polished it up for a little bit more. It's actually coming up really nicely. So I'm going to stop now and just clean that all up, and then start to put this all back together again. Um, just making sure I get rid of all of the excess polish. It has a tendency to squish through these ramps are obviously spot welded together and if you put too much polish on it it oozes out the side but you can see that that now has really got a bit of a shine to it. So while I've got this all disassembled and these opto switches are really quite easy to get hold of I've just got some window cleaner and an earbud or for those Americans a q-tip and I've just got it a very little bit of, of um, window cleaner. I'm just getting in there to each of those optos and just cleaning out all of the dirt. It's a lot easier to do when you can actually get into it. Than before when you it's really tricky to get in access to that. And just give those a bit of a clean. And now I'll just go and put it all back together. So that goes in with the gap at the bottom and the place where the screws can go in. So that is what's used at the end to secure it back. And now what I'll do is I'll just slide in 
each of these. So they just feed their way in. It's a bit awkward because the wires are a bit not long enough. So that all slides down nicely. And then of course the last one is gets the last opto switch gets screwed on at the bottom, so that'll all work out. It's a bit fiddly, but and then we get this all back together, the better. So, and then you'll see here the the V-shaped gap. There's a bit of polish left there, which I'll just clean off. Um, so where the, the ramps join, there's a bit of a V. That goes on the V goes on the top and into that piece. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to secure this one first, and then come back and secure the others because the side with the opto switch is a bit more fiddly. So I'm just going to secure that first. I'm not going to tighten it completely until I've got the other side in, but just get it so it's a bit more secure. And now The ramp goes in first, and then the opto bracket goes over that, and then the screws, I mean the nuts go on top of that. So let's get that back in, and then we can tighten it all up. With any luck, we can get the optos all nicely lined up. screws that with nuts now and now there we go. And now effectively what you need to do is to move these brackets along to a point where the opto switches are feeding through the holes and um, I'll set that all up in a second and show you how I've done that. Okay, so to uh, get the optos right we need to go into the test mode. No doubt it's going to have P issues because I've done nothing to, to tighten them up just yet. Um, but let's have a look at lining those optos. Yeah, it's going to tell me the opto is not good but we'll go into the test menu and we can go into the supercharger test and you can see that these are all good if I interrupt the beam they good but this one is not aligned so we're going to need to do a bit of work to get this opto switch better aligned Um, so let's loosen these. And wiggle. Ah. 
Ah, there's the problem. The um, wire with all the jiggling around, the wires come loose of the opto switch, so that I'll need to resolder on. And uh, it's a bit of an awkward place to get into, but let's see what we can do. So let's turn the game off. So I've got the uh, butane soldering iron out. Um, first thing I'm going to do is just re-solder a little bit so that we've got a bit of fresh flux on there. Maybe get rid of the old little bit of the old wire that was there. Retrim this back a little bit. In the wire. So there's just a little bit of solder on the wire that'll allow it when it when pressed up against this. There we go, all done. So, just take that all nice and secure. Um, now we can start again. Okay, solder fixed, so let's turn it on and see if that opto switch is working. Testing. Oh, there goes the old voltmeter. Go into the switch test. Just go into the switch edges. And we'll just opt to switch one working great. Okay, so before I screw this all back together and test whether this has made a difference on the uh, speed of the board. I'm just going to do some cleaning up around underneath here and see how that all pans out and then uh, I'll get back to you. Okay so it's all been put back together um, and um, you notice I've added a new decal there which makes it look a lot nicer than the old faded one but other than that all I've done is cleaned it up um, so I'm going to go in and now test um, to see how that supercharge is working now that we've polished the inside and uh, replaced the board um, and cleaned out the whole process. So let's go across to the supercharger time test and uh, So that's pretty good range between uh, 105 and 110. It's, you know, if you can get it below 100, that's pretty good. But uh, 105, 110 is perfectly good. With the new board, all those optos cleaned, uh, inside polished, um, and uh, a couple of new balls. I think we'll call this one done and dusted and uh, ready to go.